here's what you'll need to make this project. Your front piece of fabric with all of the design stitched on, your middle layer and your back layer of felt, a marker in two different colors, a sewing needle, regular thread, conductive thread, all of your electronic components, scissors, um, some stuffing, and a glue gun. First step is to get yourself a length of regular thread, thread it onto your needle, and we're going to be stitching up the battery pack on our circuit. Double up your thread and make a single knot. We're actually going to sew the middle layer to the back layer just along the bottom edge. And for this we'll do a simple whip stitch. I always like to start with a same side stitch which is when the needle goes in the fabric and up on the same side. Pull it until you see the end and you can split those threads apart. Put your needle through it, pull it until it makes a nice secure knot. Then you can continue stitching along the bottom edge. When you get to the end, you can end it with another same side stitch or a regular knot. So make a loop and put your needle through that loop and pull. I always like to backtrack about a centimeter and cut the thread here. Now we can place our components. So open it up so you can see the stitching and we're going to place the battery pack. We're actually going to turn it so that we have a positive and a, a negative terminal um, facing this way. Oh, sorry. This is actually going to be on the back side. About an inch or two from the seam. So positive, negative, going this way. So again, I'll grab the, some regular sewing thread and I'm going to actually stitch up these two terminals. Um, they don't need to be conductive because they're just there to hold it onto the fabric. So I'll start with a little same side stitch. Split the threads and sew it kind of like you would a button. So in and around about four times is good. And I'll just use that same piece of thread and sew the next hole. So I can end it again with a same side stitch, put it through the loop, pull, feed it through the fabric about a centimeter, and then cut. So we're done with the regular thread and discard the rest. Now we're going to mark out our circuit. So I like to place my top piece on top of the white middle layer and again you should see the battery pack here and then work on this side of your fabric. Put your layer on top and now you can decide where your LEDs are going to go. 
So if I want the cheeks to light up, I'm going to put my finger here and kind of pull back the fabric. And here's with my marker, I can mark, this is where I want my LED to go. Okay, you can double check, seems about right. And then on this side again, the same thing. And mark about there. That looks about even. And also the switch. So I want to squeeze him in his tummy to make him light up. I'll mark, put my switch right about there. So those are my three components. And now I will draw the lines where all of the conductive thread will go. So we have to go from the battery pack up to the switch, up to an LED, over to the other LED. So I'll just use a marker and I'll use a color that I can see on both. So I'm going to go from this terminal straight, carry down, and I'll draw a line right to the battery, sorry, to the switch. I'll go up to one LED, across here. Now for the other terminal, I will go from this side straight up and I want to make sure this line is not going to touch the LEDs so I'm going to go around and then this is where my second piece of thread will go. Okay so I'm going to start with getting a piece of conductive thread and for this circuit it's about 75 centimeters long, which should be good enough. And the thread can be tricky to get onto the needle, so just take your time with it. It does like to fray um, and bend, so you'll need to make a regular knot at the end of your conductive thread. regular knot there and for this we're going to be using the thread in a we're not doubling it up we're gonna have it single so it means you have to have a tail going through your needle and it's just gonna hang out so for this type of sewing you always have to make sure you're pinching the head of the needle so it won't slip out as you're sewing all right so we're ready to go and let's start stitching on the one terminal. I always like to start on the side that's going to have the switch. So when I do this, um, I like to start, I just go in the in and out, same side stitch, pull it through. For this, uh, it wants to pull through, so I'm going to have to just be gentle with it. Uh, it's going to go through the hole, and we want to do about four stitches. come up on the outside of the board, pull tight, go down the hole. And we'll repeat that about four times so that it makes good contact with the terminal. Okay, there's about three. And we'll do one more there. Okay. So I'm pulling tight and I feel like the threads are making good contact with the board so we can continue stitching. We're going to use the same thread, we're not going to cut anything, we're just going to make big stitches into our felt and I find it's easier if you actually do same side stitches. So the needle goes in and up, same side, in and up, same side. We're actually going to continue on directly onto the white felt. So you can go just directly through your fabric and keep going down those lines. In and out. And it doesn't matter how big or small your stitches are. This part can go fast if you do big stitches like this. I'm going to keep going until I reach that red mark that I made. Okay, so my needle comes up. And this is where I'm going to add my switch. So it's kind of like a button. I, uh, You just want to slip it through the hole. Yep. Okay, and you're going to secure it to the fabric. So I'm going to go through the fabric. 
watch that it's not catching. Okay, just hold it with your thumb there. And then again, we're gonna do the same thing where we go up and through the hole about four times. Make it nice and secure. I like to come up from the bottom and down through the hole so I can, it's easier to see the hole with the needle. Now this is where we have to actually end th the thread and I like to end it by bringing the needle to the outside of the board close to those stitches and then we do put your needle through those stitches that you had just made. Pull slowly until you see a loop form and then stick your needle through that loop and pull tight. And I'll do this a couple times just to be sure and form a loop. Okay, pull tight. And then I will actually just, I always like to leave about a centimeter of thread. So I'm not cutting it too close to the knot. I don't want it coming undone. Later on, we will secure with a bit of hot glue so that your knots don't slip open over time. Okay, so with that same piece of thread, you're gonna make another knot and you're just gonna use it for the rest of that side of your circuit. Okay, and we continue on on this side of the button. So again, same, you can start with a little same side stitch and through the hole. About four times around is good. Two. Make sure you're pulling tight every time so it's making good contact. Okay. And again, we're just gonna continue down the line with that same piece. I like to go in and out, same side. Da, da, da. Okay, and I'm gonna <clears throat> make one more little stitch here. This is where you get to add your first LED. So now you have to look back if you started with a negative terminal, then you gotta make sure you're connecting it to the negative terminal on your LED. So I'll place this where I made my mark. <clears throat> We're gonna use the same thread and stitch the negative side. Okay, so four times around, make good contact. You can touch it anywhere on that side almost lost my thread there. Okay. Anywhere on here, as long as it's touching anywhere on the silver, you'll be good. Two. Up on the outside of the board. Down through the hole. That's three. Four. <clears throat> okay. Now we just... Continue on sewing down this line to get to the other LED. Straight stitches. <clears throat> Come up where the dot is and then grab your other LED. Make sure it's negative side that you're gonna be sewing. Hopefully you're getting the hang of it by now. This will be the fourth, uh, actually the fifth terminal that we'll be sewing. And two more. Careful because it likes to catch on all the other components now that we have things sticking out. Okay, now this is where we're actually gonna end this piece of thread. So I always like to end it on the top side, bring your needle back to the front, and again, pass it through those stitches. Wait, pull it until you see the little loop, put your needle through that loop, pull tight, and one more for good measure. 
little tight. And again, I like to backtrack a little bit just so I'm not cutting it too close to my knot. And you snip off the rest. Okay, now you'll need a new piece of thread, another 75 centimeter piece. Load that into your needle. Make a knot and we'll continue with the other side. We're going to run the positive line now. Okay, so back to your battery and we're going to start stitching here. Don't worry if your knot is not catching in your felt. Some felts are more loose than others. Once you get a few times around, uh, it'll want to hold. So just leave a, a little bit of a tail if it's not catching the knot that you made. Mine was pulling through, so I'm just gonna leave it. And then I'll just start stitching this side. I won't pull too tight until I get a couple times around. Oops. Drop my needle. Do my rethread. So it's very easy to this thread tangles very easily. So you gotta just be have patience with it. Okay. Back to here. Down through the hole. Okay. Up. This is, I can pull tight now because now it's gone around a couple times and it's actually catching. Pull tight. Let's do, do a couple more. And just be careful. It's not catching your felt. Okay, so we're going to continue directly down the line that we drew. It might be a little difficult to see, but basically we're just going to go straight with big stitches. In and out. In and out. Is my cat running around? Have you heard that? Okay. Just continue down that line. This part hopefully will feel easier and will go faster. We don't have a switch on this side, so we're just going to keep going down the line. And we want to make sure that this thread doesn't touch the negative side, otherwise, you'll get a short circuit. So that's why we're going around, we're leaving a gap. Okay, I'll just turn my work so I can work on this side now. I want my. Now we'll stitch up these last two terminals and we'll be done. So again, about four times around. Pull tight every time. The hardest part about this, I find, is if you're not used to sewing with one length of thread, if you're used to double lining up with a knot, uh, it's very easy for this to slip off your needle. So that's just the most prep. You'll get a lot of practice doing that. Okay, so I'm done with that one. I'm going to continue down this line. close to the last hole and again down through the hole. This is our last terminal. So you're going to be an expert by now. Two, three, that's three, let's do a couple more. Got lots of thread left so 
Doesn't hurt to do one more. Okay, remember how to end it off. You bring your needle up to the top. You want to pass it underneath those stitches. Pull slow until you see a knot, a loop form. Put your needle through that loop. Pull tight. Once more for good luck. Pull tight. Okay, and I'm going to go back down just the positive side of about one centimeter. And cut. <clears throat> okay, hopefully this has gone right. And when I hit my switch here, yay, success. Okay, so if yours isn't lighting up, <clears throat> There probably is a short circuit somewhere, so it means like check on the back. If your stitches look really messy, could mean that there are positive and the negative lines are touching somewhere. Um, that's really the only way to troubleshoot is to kind of go back and check. But hopefully, if you take your time, go slow, follow the lines, um, nothing will interfere. So I have some extra long lines sticking out here around my battery as well. See this one wants to go and touch this side, which is uh, not good. So we're gonna add a dab of hot glue. Anywhere you've made a knot, um, I like to use it on the low setting. Uh, it doesn't need to be hot at all. So putting a little bit of hot glue will insulate those knots and it's on low temp, so it's okay to touch. Um, if you're afraid, maybe just ask a parent to help. But um, yeah, it'll insulate the knots because this over time, the thread might want to come undone naturally um, just because it is a slippery kind of thread. It's made of metal so I just like to put a dab of hot glue and then that way I know it's secure and I can cut off any long tails that might want to cross over. But. So you want to make sure that your circuit's working really reliably before you do this step. So if it's still kind of flaky, go back and double check because the hot glue you can't undo it. <laughs> Put a little more. You can let it cool down on its own. I like to put my finger on it just and mush it in. And you can do it on every spot. These two, remember we made knots here, so it's most importantly on the knots. Okay, I'll get rid of this. And where else did we make a knot? Here, made a knot. And here we made a knot. Once the glue is kind of cooled down. All right. So that's it. Okay, once your circuit's working well, you can put everything back together. And if you want the light, the light doesn't want to shine through the, the, the green felt, so you can take, I've got a pair of sharp fabric scissors here. I'm gonna cut a little hole just in the green so it'll want to shine through this layer. Otherwise it might be too dim. So I just cut a little hole so it can shine in. And here again. Be careful you're not cutting through your pink layer, right? You got it a little larger than it needs to be. Make this one a bit bigger. Okay, now we can see if everything lines up well. And yeah, my LEDs feel like they're in the right spot. My button is here. Oh, look at that! So cute. <laughs> Okay, so the next step is to take your regular thread, get a nice long piece. I, say, I like to say about your wingspan's worth because we are gonna double it up. And this, uh, this is, we're gonna end up stitching. I like to start at actually the bottom and you'll work your way around the top. And then you, I like to leave a big section on the side open so there'll be lots of room to get the stuffing in. So this part, you can keep watching or just start on your own. Okay, 
So one other, one pro tip I'll give you guys is that this white layer, we're, we don't really need it to go to the outer edges. So what I like to do is actually trim back about a quarter inch around the edge because it's just adding extra bulk to those to the side where we don't really even need it. So I'm going to, I'm just going to trim it down and just make sure you're not actually, you know, don't trim any of your conductive thread stitches or else your circuit, your circuit will get ruined. So leave those stitches, but when you trim it, it should, you should see the outside layer because this is where your, your stitches will go and now it won't be super bulky. It will be just be stitching through two layers instead of three layers. So grab your needle. And if you want, you can, if you have like sewing pins at home, you can throw a couple sewing pins in there. But the felt likes to stick to itself. So I like to start at the bottom here because I'll work my way around the bottom, around the top, and then I'll leave the side open. So start here and simple whip stitch is where the needle always comes in on the same side. I like to make my stitches nice and small. And just take your time with this. So I'll just Hold it whatever is comfortable for you. There we go. Okay, so if you come up to a part <clears throat> where you have like an ear or an arm or something sticking out, you can't actually do the whip stitch. So this is where you have to just do straight stitches. So you will have to alternate which way the needle's going. This side and then down. And just keep going until you get to the end of the part that's sticking out. Then you can continue with the whip stitch. And make sure you stop before you run out of thread. I'm getting kind of short here, so I know I need to end it pretty soon. <clears throat> I always like to say about double the length of your needle. So I have maybe about an inch left before it's too short. To end it, you would just make a stitch um, and catch the loop. Pull tight, and I do like to do a couple knots. So put it through, bring the needle through the loop and pull. And then I always like to feed this back through about a couple centimeters and then cut it, like, so we don't get too close to the knot. Okay, get yourself a nice long new piece of thread and keep going.
thread's not catching, so I'm going to do a little same side stitch in here. So that's where you have doubled thread and you split thread apart right where the knot is and then that way you can put it through and pull and you'll have a nice secure starter stitch there. So that's happening here. And then those extra tails, I just tuck them in. <clears throat> okay, now I can keep going here. Whip stitch until I get to a part that sticks out. And this is where I want to just do straight stitches through the, all the layers. This side, flip it. Back and forth. So the end of my straight stitch, and I'll just keep going around. So I'm probably going to do another inch, and then I'll stuff it. So now the stuffing, you want to make sure that uh, it goes between the middle and the back layer. You don't want it between your circuit because then your LEDs won't be where you want them. Okay, so take your stuffing back between the middle and back layer. And just add it in little pieces and get it to go where you need it. So you don't want to overstuff your stuffy. You could use a little more, but I'm going to close them up. And just keep going with your whip stitches now. So now as you get to the end, you always want to end with a knot to secure your work. So you make a regular stitch, but before you pull it tight, you find the loop. You want to come around, put it through, and pull tight. Do a couple for good measure. Okay, and then feed your needle back through the edge about a centimeter. And then you can cut. Okay, hopefully everything's still working in here. Yeah, look at that. And if your LEDs aren't quite in the right spot, you might want to just kind of fiddle with it until they are. And there, enjoy your toy. Now, if for some reason he does stop lighting up after a while, 
it's possible you may need to do some surgery. Um, so you might need to open up your stitches again and just kind of take the stuffing out, find the circuit again and reinvestigate. I find that these um, threads um, can break over time too. So it's not a bad idea to go again with your glue gun okay, and insulate those lines because if you're playing with it a lot, um, they could break. The other option is to cut another piece of felt and you could make a covering. So you, this is not exposed at all. You would just put a little rectangle of felt and do some stitches around it. But you want to leave one side open so that you can uh, change the battery when it, it's time to change it. And these batteries last a long time um, for the LEDs, but it depends on how much you play with them. So there you go. Hopefully everything's gone smoothly for you and completed your first soft circuit.